is it um, untenable and incurable for a prime minister not to have his statutory declaration certified for about three years? That's totally unacceptable and extremely repugnant. <laughs> is it? Bless up, bless up my people. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl and Isabel Rose. Thanks for all the new subscribers. Thanks for returning subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notification bell on. Put it on all so you won't miss an upload from me. On the road to 20k, help me to get there, my people. So in this one, my people, Dana Morris Dixon defends Daryl Vaz, as well as newly sworn in Parliamentary Secretary Senator Abka Fitzhenley commits to zealously improve the lives of Jamaicans as well as economist Ralston Hyman weighs in on Andrew Olness's comments about Prime Minister and opposition leader as it pertains to dual citizenship. Stay tuned for the details at hand. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Run go over to my other platform. Subscribe over there. Get that channel to 1k for me. Please and thanks. Some people following some data privacy breach surrounding Daryl Vaz and we've seen where Nikisha Burchell had called out Dana Morris Dixon to come and address the matter. Right? We've seen her come out in defense of Daryl Vaz saying that he did not breach the Data Privacy Act or the Data Protection Act and that Vaz says it's indeed a People's National Party representative gave him that information and not Pika. But here we share for some people. And I think this is the administration that has been the most committed to the concept of data privacy. Um, we've done a lot of work in promulgating the Data Protection Act, and that was coming out of um, listening to the people of Jamaica who had legitimate concerns about the privacy of their data. And just um, last week in the Senate, um, I would have spoken to the Data Protection Act and our commitment to implementing it on June 1 in a phased manner. So I think it is very clear in terms of our actions and also in terms of our utterances, that strong, deep commitment to data privacy. And I think in the matter that you have raised, um, he was very clear in his, um, very publicly clear, at least on social media, that the information that he received came from um, a member of the opposition party. He said that very clearly. Um, we have not seen a breach of data in this instant. Um, I believe what he may have been saying when he said that nothing is secret is that when you are a public official, there are always people who know things about you, and there are always people who, for whatever reason, may pass information on you. And I think that's what he means, because there is no way that he would be saying that, you know, we, it's okay to breach privacy because he is the minister that had oversight for the Data Protection Act before it came to the office of the Prime Minister. So he's very seized of the rules and I have no doubt that he would not have tried in any way to breach um, the data privacy rules because he has been such a critical part of promulgating um, those, those rules. And so um, it's, it's important that when we, we have these kinds of discussions that we don't, um, you know, kind of build on that low trust environment situation that we have. Um, the reality is a lot of money has been spent and on data protection and data privacy. And when we start on June 1, I made it very clear, there is no exemption for government entities. There is absolutely none. The administration has been clear that all government entities have to comply with the Data Protection Act. And that says how important data privacy is for us. Well, I know they hear it loud and clear, my people. She basically lay her neck on the black desk of him, saying that she don't think he meant how people perceive it to say that nothing is private. So I want to know for you in the comment section. Moving right along, my people, we've seen newly sworn parliamentary secretary, Senator Abcock Fitzhenley, 
says he's committed to using his new government position to zealously improve the lives of Jamaicans. And we've seen them make a few changes in them executive again, my people, where we've seen MP Nesta Morgan is now the Minister of Works and ABCA moves, moving up the ladder basically from a senator up to now parliamentary secretary and he gets a whopping salary of 17.2 million dollars per annum and a parliamentary secretary is a member of the government party named to assist a senior minister which is based in the office of the prime minister this position is not one of self-aggrandizement but it requires a deep and serious commitment to advancing the interest of the people of Jamaica. So Patrick, I listen to you very carefully and I wish to indicate to you that I will be guided by your wise counsel in terms of how my deport should reflect in the public domain and indeed in the private domain. I wish to indicate that I'm a child of the 1990s and I grew up at a time when all the key indicators of our country is fearing were going in a direction that was not favorable. I used to listen to the talk shows and I'd hear people call and complain about the circumstances within the education sector, the housing sector, and matters touching and concerning violent crime. I am honored to be part of an administration where the indicators are going in the right direction. And I commit to offering support in the office of the Prime Minister and to my colleagues in, indicate, in ensuring that that trend continues. I want to say to the people of Jamaica that I am not one who is caught up with the trappings of office. I recognize that an appointment such as this is an opportunity to zealously seek to advance their interest and secure their, their well-being. Last but not least, we've seen economist Ralston Hyman weighing on Prime Minister Andrew Wallace's comment when he made on Mark Golden's dual citizenship. And here's what Andrew Wallace said. Your party, I've seen members of your party over the past weekend calling for um, opposition leader Mark Golding to declare whether or not he is a, a, a UK citizen. You are saying then that if he is, then his position is untenable. So for two things, <clears throat> um, we believe that we must find a way to include our diaspora, our Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. So once you are a Jamaican, you have Jamaican citizenship, we believe you should be entitled to enter our parliament and, right, you said. and serve. Right. You said. However, having entered the parliament, if it is that you intend to become the ultimate decision maker, mm -hmm. then you must divest yourself of any other loyalty, even if it is not required legally. Mm -hmm. Because in the minds of the Jamaican people or any country, they are going to want to know that their ultimate decision maker yeah. is only making decisions based upon a single transparent loyalty and allegiance and to that them. you're in it with us uh, you yes. can't escape you and are in what we are in yes. and so more so. pointedly to my question then that in relation to your opposition counterpart that you're saying that his position would be untenable i think anyone in that position is would be untenable and not just that i think it would be incurable mm. in other words having gone ahead to say i want to lead the country ultimately and not having taken that step before mm. you can't cure it afterwards because already the question is then why didn't you do this before why did you carry us along mm. and not declare this 
to us. On the back of you mentioning So it's curious. not just untenable, it's incurable. To avoid paying tax in his own country on all of his earnings by having overseas account. Yeah, man, that's very bad. Is it, is it um, untenable and incurable? For a Prime Minister not to have his statutory declaration certified for about three years? That's totally unacceptable and extremely repugnant. <laughs> is, it, is it untenable and incurable for six people to sit in Parliament crafting our laws while being investigated for illicit enrichment? Yes, it is untenable and incurable. <laughs> um, and is it incurable and untenable for a prime minister who is demanding that the leader of the country and the leader of the opposition be a member of the king's privy council and at the first opportunity will take an oath to affirm in the presence of his majesty his commitment to the Privy Council. <laughs> yeah, it's totally unacceptable. <laughs> contradictory. Yeah. Is, it, is it untenable and incurable to be paying two people as DPP at the same time? Two permanent secretaries in one ministry. Precisely. <laughs> A number of operatives in the Ministry of Education doing the same job or previously holding this. Is that, is that incurable and untenable? Not terrible, but a complete waste of taxpayers' money. Yeah. Well, well they, it seems to me there is a lot more that is incurable and untenable than somebody having a birthright because of the status of their father. Yeah. I guess what Bob Bowling should also do mm -hmm. is renounce him father. His father, yeah, yeah. Precisely. <laughs> Precisely. So, yep. so and, there you go. And my thing is that even that Jamaica's total exports exports last year did yeah. not pay for the oil bill. Given that Jamaica's energy cost is one of the highest in the entire world, making it difficult for our producers to compete in Jamaica and externally, given that that leads to a massive trade deficit, given that the massive trade deficit leads to increased borrowing, given that the high energy prices make it difficult for the central bank to contain inflation without slowing down the economy, the energy minister must tell us something about the energy policy or resign rather than being engaged in the kind of nonsense that he's engaging. I say that, and I say that without any apology from an economic standpoint. There you go, sir. Yeah. So there you have it, my people. Jump on the two cents in the comment section, make a reason. Talk up the things, them, tell me what you think about everything that was outlined in this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Run go over to my other platform, Instagram and Facebook, and follow me over there at Anisabel Rose. Check out the YouTube store, make a purchase, it goes in support of the channel. Check out the YouTube membership. You get a lot of benefits by becoming a member. Only a small fee per month to become a member of the Anisabel Rose movement. Member shout out goes to Angela and Ivan Wallace. Big up on the self assist. Thanks for the continued support. We do notification shout out in each and every video to be a part of that. All you have to do is be the first to like, comment, subscribe, and you'll be featured in the following video to come. This notification show talk goes to Evelyn Meekle, big up yourself Evelyn, thanks for the continued support from each and every subscriber. New viewers, what are you waiting on? Come on board, journey with me, join the family, subscribe to the channel, like up the video, share out the videos, support the ABR movement by playing your part. On the road to 20k, help me to get there my people, like the videos, them as going to come up and them my people, so they can be recommended to other viewers. Big up on yourself, thanks for all the continued support, stay tuned for more videos, stay tuned for more updates.